Kitty Club, it is Pixie, and today we need to talk about this dress. The strawberry dress. We have a fashion meme on our hands, my friends. I am so excited to talk about this today. This is actually my third time recording this video, but I'm still super excited to talk about it. Uh, this dress has been trending all over the internet for the past like week and a bit, and it is just really exciting to have a little, ooh, on topic fashion meme to discuss. Um, I think this opens up a lot of doors for interesting conversations that we're gonna have today. So first things first, if you're not savvy, on the meme. I'm gonna be referring to it as a meme, I think, at this point. So, if you haven't seen it yet, this is the Strawberry Dress by Lyrica Matoshi. It is a midi-length tulle dress covered in sequined strawberries. The dress itself is like this muted, kind of a little bit more desaturated than millennial pink, and it has these delicate little ties around the waist, and it just, it really looks like a silhouette that's gonna look good on pretty much anyone. It just, it fits a variety of silhouettes and styles, and it's just, it's a very solid design. And I mean, it's gotta be to go so viral all over the internet. And I think this definitely coincides with the whole cottage core trend of just, we all want to be strawberry princesses right now. I think it's time to go twirl around in a meadow and this dress looks like it would twirl pretty nicely. It has been really, really interesting and funny to see the things that are on Twitter. I think I'm most active on Twitter, but I've seen posts on my own personal Facebook as well. I follow a lot of people in like the alt fashion scene. The main things that I see are people photoshopping the dress onto their favorite celebrities. Like there was this like four set of Harry Styles in the strawberry dress, various K-pop idols in the strawberry dress, and of course just boatloads and boatloads of fan art. This is so exciting, this is so fun. I can't really remember the last time I've seen a meme like this that really just celebrates a design, just a single article of clothing, and everyone is just like, yes, this is the one. Girls don't want boys, girls want the strawberry dress, just we all want it. It can appeal to a wide variety of aesthetics and styles. I think it also comes in black. I'm not sure if that's official or if that's sneaky, sneaky territory we're gonna get into later. So while this memeing is fun and may seem innocent and pure and we're all just having a good time talking about this cute dress and how we all want it, there is another side to this coin that I really want to talk about today. Wherein, if you scroll down on a big chunk of these strawberry dress memes, you will often see people linking to knockoffs on AliExpress or SheInside or whatever to kind of help out their pals and give them a give them a slip to uh, get a cheeky little deal. And this is mostly because the dress itself from the original designer is $500. Now that's a shocking price tag. If I was, you know, just walking around the market and I saw a dress I liked and I looked at the tag and it said $500, I'd be like, oh, I didn't look at that. And I would like pretend to go, you know, peruse the socks perhaps. There is a reason for this price tag and there's a lot that goes into it. And I, I think that there's a large misunderstanding. I feel like a lot of the people that I see sharing these things on Twitter are like cool people that maybe just don't fully understand and why it's so not good to be supporting and promoting and sharing AliExpress knockoffs of independent designers, you know? So let's talk about it! Lyrica Matoshi, why is the dress $500? Splaining to do? Lyrica Matoshi is an independent fashion brand that operates out of two locations. They have their base in New York City and also another factory in Kosovo that they built from the ground up with Lyrica Matoshi and her sister. I don't know if her name is Lyrica Matoshi or if that's just the label, but I know there's like her brand and then her sister's brand and then I think a mom's brand. Like these are all, I, they're clearly in the fashion world, they're in the industry, they know what they're doing. Lyrica Matoshi also employs a 100% women team and they manufacture ethically. So that means when you're paying for that $500 strawberry dress, you're paying for all of the seamstresses to be paid living wages, maybe benefits probably. You're paying for the rent and the utilities and the power and the internet to keep those two factories that they own running or warehouses or studios, I'm not sure exactly. I believe this fabric is also one that they manufactured themselves. I haven't seen it anywhere else until these knockoffs started popping up. 
there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes in ethical brands that you don't see, including like education costs. A, a lot of my prices when I first start out are probably going to be like helping to pay for all of the college education because that's something that you need to factor in. When you're investing in anything from a person that has put in years and probably thousands of dollars to learn a skill, a trade like this that is specific, a lot of Lyrica Matoshi's garments are these painstakingly artistic artistically pleated tool that can only be draped on the mannequin and all of these things are very specific techniques that have to be learned in a way and you can tell that there's quality control and there's care and there's pride and you can look on their Instagram and see behind the scenes of these women sewing these cute little masks and strawberry dresses and it's really really important to me to be able to see that behind the scenes and see those people smiling and know that everyone's being treated well but that's, you know, a whole other additional fleet of costs that your t-shirt at H&M or your little dress from She Inside is not covering because those people aren't getting those basic needs. I was gonna say benefits, but like, you know, they're, they're not getting minimum wage. And so this opens up a whole other beautiful Easter egg. I was gonna say box, an Easter egg of problems. And that is that no, a $500 dress is definitely not an accessible reality for most people. It is a luxury, it is expensive, it is definitely out of my ballpark. There's a reason why I don't have the strawberry dress either. I actually recommended Lyrica Matoshi a while back. I think it was my first video about leaving fast fashion and I just like listed off rapid fire 10 or so brands that I had discovered on Instagram that manufactured ethically and that also fit like my kind of aesthetic feeling going on and Lyrica Matoshi was one of them. So I've seen the strawberry dress and I've had it saved in my like wish list for a long, long time, and if I was able to get it, I would, but I'm a student, and, um, and that's rent. You know, strawberry dress or rent. I absolutely in zero way at all, zero, zero singular way at all, am shaming people that can't afford to throw $500 on a big glittery strawberry sequin tool dress, like, no. But I also see a lot of people in these Twitter threads calling classism on anyone that defends the $500 tag and just getting really nasty and not only being like, I'll just go buy a knockoff, but berating and belittling and shitting on the designer that made this thing that you just said that you liked and wanted. That makes me really sad because at the end of the day, I am not here to make anyone feel bad for shopping on AliExpress or She Inside. If you need to buy new clothes for your school year or if you need some interview clothes or if you gained weight or whatever, if you need like a haul of clothing, you need some jeans, pants, socks, whatever, I totally understand. I'm in a privileged position. I have a lot of clothes built up that I just don't get rid of now. I have a lot of stuff that I can just go delve into my closet and find if I need a particular thing. There's a lot of people that rely on sites like that and those prices to be able to get clothes they need 100% fair. I think the line and it is this, it's the, it's the thought path that I have a problem with. When you discover the original design, you go to the Lyrica Matoshi website, you click on it, you discover the price, and then you go up to Google and you type strawberry sequin dress AliExpress. You know, it's that direct, oh, I like this. Ooh, oh no, it's out of my price range. I'm going to go support a knockoff. But then it's also tricky because a lot of things on these wholesale fashion websites are actually ripped designs from other smaller brands and even bigger brands. Half the stuff on there is lazy of rips that are just made for even cheaper. And this has even actually happened to me. I did like a Taobao haul back when I was a baby and I got a skirt and someone commented, oh, that's a Liz Lisa print. And I was like, oh, I bought a Liz Lisa replica. I didn't even know that. And I felt kind of bad about it, but at this point, I also, once in my life, as I think I was 15 or 16, I actually purchased a replica myself, and I wanna talk about that. When I was, like I said, I think 15 or 16, I was just wiggling, wiggling my little fingers into the Lolita fashion community, and I fell in love with the most popular, of course, and basic print, Sugary Carnival. It's marshmallows, it's ponies, 
I fell in love with it, and this print is just so, so, so extremely popular that it's really hard to get a hold of, or at least at the time, I think they might have done a reprint, I don't know, I'm not in the scene anymore, I'm sorry. Somehow, in my little brain, I justified it, and that makes me so angry. My reasoning for purchasing a knockoff of a design that I, I directly knew that it was by Angelic Pretty, and I couldn't find it, and I couldn't get my hands on it because it was just so sought after that I went to a replica maker person and I ordered a replica. And it's like that thought process, I'm trying to go back to that because it's just, you know, like many things on my channel now that I advocate against, I partook in it once. And I think it's important to be able to just kind of look yourself in the eye and be like, why are you the way that you are to kind of understand maybe and empathize with people that are in that boat now? But my reasoning was definitely just it was hard to find, it was very rare, and I just wanted it so bad it was my dream dress. It's my dream dress, my dream item, I can't live without it. It's just that kind of, I'm gonna use it, the E word, entitlement. The entitlement that I felt to this pink dress with marshmallow poles and ponies that I was okay with directly seeking out and aiding in committing art theft, I cannot comprehend it. I just hope that I can maybe help you guys see the lens a little bit more, that that thought pattern of finding an independent fashion brand that is doing everything right and paying their workers and directly kind of beating them into the dirt by raising up knockoffs and, you know, pushing them down. Please remember, if you take anything from this video, it's that we are voting with our dollar every day. Fashion is a huge issue. It is the source of a ton of sweatshops and unethical labor and pollution in the world. And we just so desperately are trying to claw our way away from that and desperately trying to support ethical and slow fashion and grassroots and paying people and treating people with respect and letting people live happy lives. And you know, we're trying so, so, so hard. And then just to see this blowing up on Twitter and scrolling down on half the posts and seeing like, Oh, oh my god, it's $300, it's $500, I'm just gonna buy a knockoff. <sighs> and like I said, if you need clothing, if you're going back to school and you literally, like, clothing is a necessity for sure. But I think maybe a maxi midi length, super voluminous, designer made, all over strawberry glitter dress is not a necessity. Please support artists and support designers, and to all of the people that are enjoying and spreading this meme by just drawing their characters in it, or wearing it in Animal Crossing, or photoshopping it on their favorite celebrities. This is super wholesome, super wonderful, and I hope we see a lot more of this fashion memery happening in the future. I think it's awesome. Clearly they got quite a boost from this, and I know there are a number of people also defending them in all these threads and saying the same things that I'm saying, so at least it's stimulating the discussion and probably stimulating their business as well. And there's also a number of people that are just like, I'm saving up for the strawberry dress. Can I wear it at my wedding? Is it prom time, you know? So to all of you guys who are just enjoying sharing the strawberry dress and not, you know, totally bashing the designers for the price tag, um, I love you and I hope that this kind of thing comes through again because so fun, oh my gosh. Fashion memes, very fun. I think that's all I have to say. I'm sorry if this was a little bit spicy, but I tried to keep it positive while still talking about the really important things that are, you know, embedded in this topic. They have a lot of really beautiful pieces. I I want their little cloud knit. I want their real, little rainbow mesh top. This one has also been knocked off so much on uh, fast fashion wholesale websites. I see this one a lot. So again, sometimes you might not even know that this is a Lyrica Matoshi design and you just put it in your cart because it's cute and you're like, oh no, now I own a replica. So yeah, at the end of the day, just do what you can, be informed, and be kind, and considerate, and nice to people. I think if we all just keep that stuff in mind, it's gonna be a good time. At the end of the day, 
This is a strawberry dress. It's very cute. It's very sweet. It's very beautiful. And um, let's not uh, tussle over it, friends. I'm sorry that this is not the tattoo design winners. I wanted to take a couple extra days to make sure I had the top three winners totally figured out and I totally do. And also this was a trending topic, so I wanted to make sure I sniped it while it was hot, but that video should be the next one. So that will be very exciting. Um, I won't be getting it like tattooed on my body in that video, but you'll see the winners and all the entries and that's gonna be super, super, super fun. So yeah, please look forward to that. I love you very much, and let's see our confetti friend. This video's Future Confetti Club member is Margo Illustraciones, I hope I'm saying that right, on Instagram, who did this absolutely lovely illustration of me with Anne of Green Gables. If you guys don't know, Anne of Green Gables is pretty much the thing that makes Prince Edward Island like popular. It's kind of our big tourism thing. Um, it was like, you probably know Anne of Green Gables. Anyway, that's the place that I'm from. And I love Anne of Green Gables, big part of my childhood. Watch the musicals every year. And yeah, I love this so, so much. I would love to picnic with Anne. I love you guys all so, so much. And I will see you in the next video, which is not this one because this one's over. Bye.